I'm going to share with you a bunch of diagnoses from a new patient that I have. He's a former uh, military person in charge of nuclear material that were being stored underground in bunkers. And these places were moldy. And he was a very um, healthy person. And then he got very sick very quickly. Now, basically, he's in bed all day. He can't sit upright. He's lost control of his muscles. He's got swelling in his forehead, lymphatic system swelling. And I want to share with you a variety of diagnoses that he's received from his uh, medical doctors. Okay, so in this first paragraph, this is a summary of all the paperwork that he's given me, all the lab work, all the workups and history that he's had. And this is what the first paragraph says. I'm just going to read it to you. He is a 34-year-old male veteran with history of multiple exposures leading to severe connective tissue degradation. So just bear with me. I want you to get this understanding that they did all these workups. And basically what we have are several causes. We have many symptoms and collections of symptoms. And we also have many mechanisms. But what matters? The matter, what matters is the causes. So we have multiple exposures leading to severe connective tissue degradation. That's a symptom resulting in CCI. I don't even know what that is. I could look it up, but I'm not going to. IIH, don't know what that is. TC, MCAS, that's mast cell activation syndrome. That's a mechanism. NMO, dysauton dysautonomia, that's a, a, a symptom. It says patient needs to proceed with surg surgical intervention and then followed by a workup for aggressive medical management for MCAS, mast cell activation syndrome, and autoimmunity. They're saying we, we need to do surgery and medicine to, to stop these mechanisms. Autoimmunity is a mechanism. It's not a cause of disease. So let's go through these diagnoses. There's 15 of them, and only four really matter. I need you to understand this, because this is what medicine doesn't understand. There are causes, there's mechanisms, and there's symptoms. Those symptoms include a collection of symptoms called diseases. And lastly, there's also triggers, right? Like chocolate can trigger a migraine, but that's not a cause for a migraine. It's only a trigger. So diagnosis number one, cervical spine instability. That is a symptom, not a cause. Number two, acquired tethered cord syndrome. That is a symptom or a disease, not a cause. It, it could, you could also call it a syndrome. Syndrome means we don't know what it is. Like... Sudden adult death syndrome. We don't know what it is. That's what that means. Number three, benign intracranial hypertension. It sounds scary, and it is, but again, it's not a cause of disease. Number four, fatigue. That's a symptom. Number five, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. That means when you stand up, your heart beats faster, your blood pressure drops, and you get really dizzy. I had that when I had mold. Again, it's a symptom. Now, there's doctors that specialize in POTS, but again, you're just treating symptoms get to the cause. Number, we have not addressed any causes so far, except for the fact that that very first sentence says, a uh, male veteran with history of multiple exposures. He's got multiple exposures. Okay, number six, headache. Okay, again, a symptom. Number seven, exposure to mercury. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Mercury comes in, it destroys your nervous system. And there's video of, like, this is a nerve cell, and you drop a little mercury right there, and it denudes the merc the uh, nerve myelin sheath that gets it becomes nude. The exterior sheathing goes away because mercury is that poisonous. So now we got the diagnosis number seven: exposure to mercury. Number eight: Lyme disease. All right, now we're getting somewhere again. This is a cause of chronic illness. Lyme can get inside the brain, inside the cerebral spinal fluid, the central nervous system, and it can cause Parkinson's. It can cause Alzheimer's. And it can cause all kinds of arthritis in the joints and muscle weakness and fatigue. Okay, so Lyme disease. And then number nine, mast cell activation syndrome. Again, that's a mechanism. It describes what cells will do and they cause, uh, cause all these problems. But mold can cause it. Toxicity causes it. Um, okay, number 10, tick-borne relapsing fever. That is another cause. That is a Lyme organism. So now we have three causes out of 15 diagnoses, there's only three that are really important. <clears throat> now, number 11, neurogenic bladder. That means his bladder is acting up. That's a symptom. Number 12, exposure to mold. And sure enough, on other lab tests, the functional medicine lab test, it does show mycotoxins. So now we have four causes of chronic illness. 
and these need to be pulled out of the body. How do you get chronic illness? Number one, uh, poor lifestyle choices. Number two, unlucky exposures. So he did not have poor lifestyle choices. Um, he had a healthy diet, worked out all the time, was very physically fit, but he had unlucky exposures dealing with nuclear material in moldy places underground. Okay, number 13, it says Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. And typically, it's hypermobility. Typically, people think of that as genetic, like you're born with it. Um, but it could be acquired because of various uh, medications and exposures. So yeah, ehlers Daniel Daniel syndrome, not a, a cause of chronic illness. It's a description description of symptoms combined. Number fourteen, disorder of connective tissue. What the heck is that? You know, that's the diagnosis: disorder of connective tissue. Okay, fine. That's a symptom. Number fifteen, autoimmune state. So his body's attacking himself. The immune system is attacking tissues. Yeah, but what's causing it? Again, autoimmune state, that's a, that's a mechanism, which can lead to symptoms, but it's not a cause. Okay, so um, he's in really bad shape, and um, I'm approaching this with the seven-step blueprint to optimal health. Okay, here in the seven-step blueprint to optimal health, step six is powerful detoxification. So he does have a urine test showing uranium, and uh, we already mentioned the mercury. So those two things come out in step six. Lyme comes out in step seven, cellular immune cleansing. So how do you get to step six and step seven? You got to do steps one, two, three, four, and five first. So his diet is step one, um, pretty much have that under, under control. And then he needs mitochondrial support to increase energy in step two. He needs to make sure the drainage organs are working well. That'd be the, the liver and the kidneys, the lymphatic system. He's got swelling in his forehead. That's uh, lymphatic system congestion. So I put him on lymphatic supplements. And then steps four and five, parasites. Does he have parasites? We don't know. But all I got to do is take a couple supplements and just see what comes out. And if nothing comes out, great. We, then we move on to the next step. If he gets a bunch of parasites coming out, let's say he gets parasites out for five months. He, and it's good, right? It gets all that stuff cleaned out. That doesn't mean he feels better because you still got to do step six and seven, but you got to prepare your body for step six and seven. So getting the parasites out in steps four and five, super important. There are Lyme doctors who specialize in step seven and they don't do anything else. And the, their patients get better for a year, but then all the problems come back. And then there's people who specialize in detox step six. And they're using um, EDTA IV chelation right into the arm, getting mercury out. But you, but I've seen people do that, and then their kidneys shut down. Step three, drainage. Got to make sure the kidneys are working. Um, I've seen people suffer from heavy metal detox because they still have parasites. And one woman lost all of her hair. So I had to fix the parasites because she was detoxing before getting rid of the parasites. Once we got the parasites out, once we started getting the parasites out, her hair grew back. Um, and then there's people that do step one only diet, foundational foods. That's all they know is step one. They don't know any. They don't know anything about. They don't know anything else about steps two through seven. And it's fine, right? You get the diet down, and then find somebody else that could do steps two through seven, right? So not everybody knows all these things. Okay, I do because I created this. I created this document maybe four years ago, and I still am learning from it. And I see it in practice. I see people, you know, doing some of the steps, but not th the other steps. And I, and they're missing, you know, whatever they're missing. And I fix it up and they get better yet. The last step is lifelong optimization, meaning nourishing the organs, feeding the organs. And now you can do this at any point during the seven steps, or you could do it after the seven steps are over. So if you're really working on detoxing parasites in steps four and five, maybe your intestines need some support. So you can do optimization of the intestinal wall. And maybe when you're detoxing step six, you, you need to feed your kidneys. And that's optimization of the kidneys. So you can do specific food and supplements throughout this whole detox process. But if you have parasites in your gut, why are you taking a multivitamin, right? Like if you got a four foot tapeworm in your gut, then, you know, like they, they will cause magnesium deficiency. They will cause constipation. They will cause, um, you name the symptom, right? Any symptom. And if you have chemical toxicity, right? Step seven, or I'm sorry, step six, 
like everybody's got chemical toxicity. I've been uh, running a lot of chemical tests, urine tests, and even I have high glyphosate and a couple other things. And, you know, what symptoms do chemical toxicities cause? Well, it's hard to tell. Nobody really knows an answer to that question. I mean, you can say like if you get bloated in the gut and you have a white coating on your tongue, that's obviously candida or yeast. Sure, that sounds reasonable. But what if that candida and yeast is in your body because you're toxic with chemicals, right? The only way you can find out is with a, with a urine test. And I'm setting something up pretty quickly where you can order um, a small urine test that's really inexpensive or a very expensive one that covers a lot or one that's right in the middle as far as price. So we're going to get that um, set up pretty soon here. And then you can just order on your own without even talking to us. You just order it. And then you can run the urine test on yourself and um, see if you have high uh, chemical toxicity. So some people, I've, I have a guy recently, he, was, he had a plastic in his body 395 times too high. Not double, not triple, not 10x, not even 100x, 395x too much plastic in his body. And he said it was probably because of eating uh, TV frozen dinners after he got a divorce. Okay, I wanted to share this with you so that you get this idea of like, just because you have a diagnosis doesn't mean it's important. The diagnosis makes you feel better because now you have an, an answer, you have a name for your description. And the doctors say, oh, everything will be okay. We know exactly what it is. Well, what they just probably told you was something that describes your symptoms, but you should feel better once you know the cause. When you know the cause and you have a correct answer, then it opens the door for healing. If you had a diagnosis 20 years ago and you still have that disease, it was not the correct diagnosis and it was not the correct treatment because you need to have this open door for healing. See what I'm saying? The correct answer will provide to you the, the uh, pathway to healing. So this kind of changes the way medicine thinks, right? Um, so much focus on symptoms and so much focus on what medicine doesn't know anything about. You see it in the news like, oh, this is a mystery. Here's, you know, why are allergies on the rise? Why is low birth rate on the, on the rise? Why is this organism spreading like it is, right? Nobody knows. It's, it's, so it's in the, in the, in the, in the uh, public media, like, oh, another mystery. Thank God we have medical doctors and they're super smart and they're going to take care of us. And then, and then they just completely miss it because they're not getting to the cause. All right. I hope you enjoy this information. It is my goal in life to bankrupt drug companies. And I'm currently unsuccessful. I've had zero drug companies go bankrupt. As a matter of fact, they are more powerful now than ever before and more wealthy now than ever before, more political power, more control over society than ever before. And the way that you combat that is you become healthy and then you just don't need them. And they're, they're, and they're your desire, need, or want of pharma and surgery just goes away. And sure, there's times when you have an emergency and you need their help, but chronic illness needs to be addressed correctly. And medicine just doesn't do chronic illness well. They're really good at emergency rooms. And so they wanna make everything an emergency because that's their specialty. You know, you, you have a symptom, Let's squash it, you know, take a steroid, you know, take a drug, boom, 24 hours later, you feel better, but that doesn't fix the cause as you know. And so, you know, I give medicine their props for doing a good, a good job of diagnosing, but not having a full philosophical understanding and overview of what's really important for the human body, how the human body works, how the mitochondria work and what it takes to make them work better. The toxins that need to be removed, the nutrients that need to be put in. Um, but what I gave you today, hopefully will put you on the right track and so that you can maintain, you can improve your health and, and have uh, maintenance of health for the rest of your life. All right. Take care. Call the office if you need some help. Bye.